Trifles by Susan Glispell. The kitchen in the now abandoned farmhouse of John Wright. It's gloomy, unwashed pans under the sink, a loaf of bread outside the bread box, a dish towel on the table, other signs of uncompleted work. The sheriff comes in followed by the county attorney and the witness. They are followed by two women, Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hale. The women have come in slowly and stand close together near the door. Feels good. Come up to the fire, ladies. I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. Uh, before we begin, has anything been moved? Or are things just you left in yesterday? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. It's no use getting pneumonia with the big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove. And you know Frank. Uh, somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday. When I had to send Frank to Morris Center for that man who went crazy. I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself... Well, Mr. Hale, tell just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I had started a town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place, and I got here. I said, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to Wright about it once before, and he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyways, and all he asked was peace and, was peace and quiet. And I guess you know about how much he talked to himself, but I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife, though I said to Harry that I didn't know was what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Well, let's talk now, about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but tell now just what happened when you got to the house. I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door and still it was all quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock. So I knocked again and I thought I heard somebody say... Come in. I wasn't sure, but I opened the door, and there in that rocker sat Mrs. Wright. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand. It was kind of uh, pleating it. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next, and kind of done up. How did she seem to feel about you coming? Well, I don't think she minded, one way or another. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do you do, Mrs. Wright? It's cold, ain't it? Is it? And went on kind of pleating at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she <laughs> laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a little sharp. Can I see John? No. She says, kind of dull-like. Any home, I said. Yes. She said. He's home. Then why can't I see him, I asked her, out of patience. Because he's dead. Dead, I say? She's not at her head. Not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Why, where is he, I say, not knowing what to say. She just pointed upstairs like that. I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here. Then I say, what did he die of? He died of a rope round his neck. She said, and just went on pleating at her apron. Well, I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need uh, Hill. We went upstairs, and there he was lying. I think I'd rather have you go into that upstairs, or you can point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked... But Harry, he went up to him, and he said, No, he's dead, all right, and we'd better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked. No. Who did this, Mrs. Wright? Said Harry. He said it business-like, and she stopped pleating her apron. I don't know. You don't know, says Harry. 
No. Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry? Yes, says she. But I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope round his neck and strangled him, and you didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up. We must have looked as if we didn't see how that could be. For after a minute, she said, I sleep sane. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said maybe we ought to let her tell her story first to the coroner or to the sheriff. So Harry went as fast as he could to the river's place where there's a telephone. What did Miss Wright do when she knew that you'd gone for the coroner? She just sat there with her hands held together, looking down. I got a feeling that I ought to make some conversation, so I said I'd come to see if John wanted to put in the telephone. And at that, she started to laugh, and then stopped, and looked at me, scared. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you and Sheriff Peters, and so I guess that's all I know that you don't. Yeah, I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn around there. You're convinced that there was nothing important here, nothing that would point to any motive. That's the nearby kitchen thing. Uh, here's a nice mess. Oh, her fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire would go out and her jars would break. Cold for murder and worrying about her preserves. I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. <laughs> Dirty towels all over the place. Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. Yeah, sure. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might seem. Yeah, I see. But you and Miss Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. I've not seen much of her of late years. I've not been in this house. It's been more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Yes. It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, <laughs> that ain't cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the uh, homemaking instinct. <laughs> well, I don't know if Wright had either. You mean they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place would be any cheerfuller for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk more of that a little later. I want to get the lay of things upstairs now. I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She was to take in some clothes for her, you know, a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take, Miss Peters, and keep an eye out for anything that might be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. I'd hate to have men coming into my home, snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty, sure. It's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's someone here that's all right, Mrs. Peters. Yes, here. Uh, cherries, too. I declare I believe there's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work in the hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put my cherries up last summer. She moves it to the big kitchen table at the center of the room. With a sigh, she's about to sit down in the rocking chair when she realizes what chair it is. Carefully, she steps back. The chair, which she has touched, rocks back and forth. Well, I must get those things from the front room closet. Are you coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You could help me carry them. They go in the other room and then reappear quickly Mrs. Peters carrying a dress and skirt, Mrs. Hale following with a pair of shoes. My, it's cold in there. Ryan was close. I think that's maybe why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the lady's aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part, and then you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that, 
Oh, that was 30 years ago. <laughs> this all you were gonna take in? She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, but there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. But I suppose just to make her feel more natural. She said it was in the top drawer in this cupboard, and then her little shawl that's always hung behind the door. Yes, yes Mrs. Hale? Do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for her apron and her little shawl, worrying about her fruit. Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in a speech and he'll make fun of her for saying she didn't wake up. Well, John Wright didn't even wake up when they were slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty and still, they say it was such a funny way to kill a man. Rigging it all up like that? That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out that what was needed for the case was a motive. Something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. Wonder how they're finding things upstairs. You know, it seems kind of like sneaking, locking her up in town and then coming out here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose. Better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel it when you go out. Mrs. Peters takes off her first stool, goes to hang it on the hook at the back of the room, and then stands. She looks at the small corner table of Minnie sewing. She must have been piecing a quilt. It's a ball cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. I wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? Well, let's go out to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't know if there's anything so strange. Us taking up our time with little things while we're waiting for them to get the evidence. I don't see it as anything to laugh about. Of course, they've got awful important things on their minds. Uh, Mrs. Peters, look at this quilt block. Uh, here, this is the one she was working on, and look at the sewing. All the rest of it has been so nice and ingid. And look at this. It's all over the place. Why, it looks as if she didn't even know what she was about. After she has said this, they look at each other, then start to glance around uneasily. After an instant, Mrs. Hale has pulled at a knot and ripped the sewing. Oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? Just pulling out a stitch or two if it's not so very well. Bad sewing always made me fidgety. No, I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale. What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if she was nervous. I sometimes sew awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find a string. In that cupboard, baby? Why, well, here's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here long. There was a man around last year selling canaries cheap, but I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird here. She must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. I suppose maybe the cat got it? No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats, being afraid of them. My cat got in her room and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. My sister Bessie was like that. Strange, isn't it? Why, well, look at the door. It's broken. One hinge is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they're going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It would be lonesome for me to be sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I'd come over sometimes when she was here. I, I really wish I had.
But of course you were awful busy, Mrs. Hale. You had your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it wasn't cheerful. And that's why I ought to have come. I've never liked this place. Maybe it's because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is. But it's a lonesome place and always was. I wish I had come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. You mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks until... something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. And Wright was out to work all day and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Yes, good. He didn't drink and kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with him. <laughs> like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird. But what do you suppose went with it? I don't know. Unless it got sick and died. She reaches over and swings the broken door and swings it again. Both women watch it. You weren't raised around here, were you? You didn't know her? Not till they brought her yesterday. She, come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. How she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind. Well, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Now, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in here and her things. They look in the sewing basket. Here's some red. I expect this has got sewing things in it. And there's a rather pretty box. Looks like something somebody would give you. Maybe her scissors are in here. What? There's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. This isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters. It's the bird. Mrs. Peters, look at it. It's neck. Look at its neck. It's all... Somebody wrung its neck. Their eyes meet, a look of growing comprehension, of horror. Mrs. Hale hurriedly slips the box under quilt pieces and sinks into her chair. Well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? We think she was going to knot it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? Mrs. Hale carefully puts more quilt pieces over the box. We think the cat got it. Oh, is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. No sign at all of anyone having come from the outside. Their own rope. Now let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. It, it would have have to have been someone who knew just the right way. Mrs. Peters sits down. The two women sit there, not looking at one another, but as if peering into something, and at the same time holding back. When they talk now, it is in the matter of feeling their way over strange ground, as if afraid of what they are saying, but as if they cannot help saying it. She liked the bird. She was gonna bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy who took a hatchet and before my eyes and before I could get there and if they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem to never have any children around. No, John Wright wouldn't like the bird. A thing that sang, she used to sing. He killed that, too. 
We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing that was done in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept. Slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him. Neck yeah, choked the life out of him. We don't know who killed him. We don't know. If there had been years and years of nothing, then a bird to sing to you. It would be awful. Still, after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, after he was two years old and me with no other than... How soon do you suppose they'll be through? Looking for the evidence? I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and stood up there in the choir and sang. Oh, I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was the crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't take it on. I know she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together, and we live far apart. We all go through the same things. It's all just a different kind of the same thing. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it's all right. Man, it's a good thing the man couldn't hear us. Wouldn't they just laugh? Getting all stirred up over a little thing like a dead canary. As if that could have anything to do with, with, wouldn't they laugh? Maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But, you know, juries, when it comes to women, if there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up the strange way of doing it. Well, I've got the team around. Pretty cold out there. I'm going to stay here a while by myself. You can send Frank out for me, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied that we can't do better. You want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take into her? Uh, I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. Who moves a few things around, disturbing the quilt pieces which cover the box. Uh, Mrs. Peters don't need supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Miss Pierce? Not just that way. <laughs> Married to the law. I just want you to come in here a minute, George. We ought to take a look at these windows. <laughs> oh, windows. <laughs> we'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Mrs. Hale rises, hands tight together, looking intensely at Mrs. Peters whose eyes make a slow turn around the room until she meets Mrs. Hale's. For a moment, Mrs. Hale's eyes hold hers. Then her own eyes point the way to where the box is concealed. Suddenly, Mrs. Peters throws back quilt pieces and tries to put the box in the bag she is wearing. It is too big. Frantically, she opens the box, starting to take the bird out. But freezes. She cannot touch it. She stands there, helpless. Mrs. Hale snatches the box and puts it in the pocket of her big coat. Well, Peters, at least we found out that she was not going to quilt it. She was going to... What is it you call it, ladies? We call it... Not it, Mr. Henderson. 